this video we will discuss the pathological features of colonic polyps and adenomas of colon so let's start with the colonic polyps so based on the morphologies the colonic polyps can be divided into three types that are inflammatory polyps juvenile polyps and hyperplastic polyps so inflammatory polyps as the name implied are composed of polyp like masses that have dense inflammatory infiltrate so they are composed of polypoid mass with dense inflammatory infiltrate and as inflammation causes destruction of mucosa or epithelium so you will also see ulceration of overlying mucosa so in inflammatory polyp you see polypoid mass with dense inflammatory infiltrates and you see ulceration of overlying mucosa now the next type of polyps are juvenile polyps in juvenile polyps you see that crypts appear as cystically dilated glands filled with mucin and inflammatory cells so for example you know that the epithelium of the intestine is in the form of crypts like this but in juvenile polyps what happens that these crypts become filled with cystically dilated glands large glands that are cyst like in appearance and these cystically dilated glands are filled with mucin and they are filled with inflammatory cells so in juvenile polyps you see that crypts appear as cystically dilated glands filled with mucin and inflammatory debris third types of polyps are hyperplastic polyps and as the term hyperplastic implies these polyps are composed of crowding of epithelial cells so you can see here that the epithelial cells are crowded due to hyperplasia and these hyperplastic polyps have a serrated surface architecture serrated surface architecture means like this in which the surface of this epithelium is in the form of sawtooth appearance or serrations and why do these serrations develop these serrations again develop due to the crowding of epithelial cells so remember that in hyperplastic polyp you see polyps with crowding of epithelial cells and their surface is serrated like this so these are the colonic polyps now let's come to the pathological features of adenomas of colon grossly the adenomas of colon are either sessile or pedunculated masses for example sessile masses means that the tumors are directly attached to the wall of colon while pedunculated masses means that the tumors are attached to the walls of colon through a stalk like this so sessile are immobile and pedunculated due to their stalk are mobile so adenomas of colon can either be sessile or pedunculated masses secondly they their texture resembles velvet or raspberry so these tumors are actually red in color whose texture resembles like a velvet or raspberry now let's come to the microscopic features for microscopic features you have to discuss under two headings that what is the cytology of these colonic adenomas and what is the architecture of these colonic adenomas both of these are very important points so let's start with the cytology now cytologically the characteristic features of colonic adenomas is dysplasia in the epithelial cells so epithelial cells show dysplasia in adenomas of colon this is a very characteristic feature which you have to remember now this dysplasia in colonic adenomas is characteristically composed of three changes that is nuclear hyperchromasia nuclear hyperchromasia means that nucleus become hyperchromatic second is nuclear elongation that the nuclei are elongated in size as compared to the normal third is abnormal nuclear stratification now what does this term nuclear stratification actually means for this purpose let me show a diagram for example these are the epithelial cells now what happens is that you know that normally the nuclei of the adjacent epithelial cell are in a single plane like this but what happens in colonic adenomas is this that the nuclei are not present in a single plane rather they are present in a haphazard orientation not in a single plane rather abnormally stratified like this for example one nucleus is present above the plane one is present below the plane so this abnormal stratification is a characteristic feature of epithelial cell dysplasia in colonic adenomas so remember this point that epithelial cell dysplasia can be in the form of nuclear hyperchromasia nuclear elongation and nuclear stratification now let's discuss the architecture of these colonic adenomas so based upon the architecture they can be classified into tubular type villus type and tubular villus type in tubular type you see pedunculated masses composed of rounded tubular glands so for example you can see that this is a peduncle and in the polyp or in the tumor you see tubular glands so the tubular type consists of pedunculated masses composed of rounded tubular glands second type is villus that are sessile and covered by slender villi so for example you can see here that these are the finger like projections that are called villi 
so villus adenomas have this slender villi and the third type is tubular villus in which there is a mixture of tubular and villus elements so for example here you can see that these are the villi and along with the villi these are the glands so they show villi as well as tubular glands now let us revise the microscopic features of colonic adenomas in colonic adenomas according to the cytology you see dysplasia in epithelial cells this dysplasia can be manifested in the form of nuclear hyperchromasia nuclear elongation and nuclear stratification and according to the architecture you can either see tubular variety villus variety or tubular villus variety now they commonly ask a question that which histological type or which histological architecture has the highest risk of malignancy the answer to this is that the architecture of the tumor does not matter whether it is tubular whether it is villus or whether it be tubular villus the real thing that matters is the size of the tumor so greater the size of tumor greater is the risk of malignancy and another factor that correlates with the risk of malignancy is high grade dysplasia so if dysplasia is high grade there are more chances of malignancy as compared to the situation when the tumors show low grade dysplasia so remember that architecture does not matter now other than these architectural types there is a special variant of colonic adenomas that is known as sessile serrated adenoma or also known as sessile serrated polyp now the special point about sessile serrated adenomas is that they characteristically lack dysplasia you know that when we discussed colonic adenomas we discussed that the characteristic feature of colonic adenomas is epithelial dysplasia but this sessile serrated adenomas are a variant of colonic adenomas in which epithelial dysplasia is absent now the question arises that if epithelial dysplasia is absent why don't why don't we classify them under the category of colonic polyps rather than classifying in the colonic adenomas the answer is that even though they lack epithelial dysplasia but still they have a malignant potential to transform into the colonic adenocarcinoma that's why we have to classify them under the heading of adenomas but they differ from adenomas in a way that they lack epithelial dysplasia so remember that sessile serrated adenomas lack dysplasia now the next keyword is that these adenomas have a serrated architecture as implied by their name sessile serrated adenomas so these adenomas have a presence of serrated architecture throughout full length of glands involving the base of crypts now when we discuss the topic of hyperplastic polyps we saw that in hyperplastic polyps also there is presence of serrations but these serrations were present only on the surface of the epithelium but in sessile serrated adenomas these serrations are present throughout the full length of epithelium even involving the base of crypts so let me explain you through this uh, diagram you know that the epithelium of colon is in the form of surface epithelium like this and this surface epithelium invaginates deep in the lamina propria to form crypts like this now when we discussed hyperplastic polyps we discussed that in hyperplastic polyps the serrations are present only in the superficial layers but now in sessile serrated adenomas we are discussing that these serrations are present not only in the superficial layer but they are also present deep in the bases of crypts and also in these glands that are present here so in sessile serrated adenomas the presence of serrated architecture is throughout the full length of epithelium or throughout the full length of glands even involving the base of crypts while in hyperplastic polyps the serrations are just superficial so here i have also done drawn a small diagram that in sessile serrated adenomas there is superficial serrations there visible here and serrations are also present in the base and in the crypts so remember this point that sessile serrated adenomas are serrated throughout their full length so let me revise the sessile serrated adenomas in sessile serrated adenomas also known as sessile serrated polyps you see no dysplasia and serrated architecture so no dysplasia means that they lack epithelial dysplasia but why they are classified adenomas rather than classified as polyp because they have a malignant potential to transform into adenocarcinoma just like all other adenomas have the potential to do so serrated architecture means that they have a serrated architecture throughout the full length of epithelium not only on the surface but throughout the full length of epithelium so this concludes the pathological features of colonic adenomas and colonic polyps